Oh. We're so pleased to welcome now Major General Jansen Boyles, Adjutant General of Mississippi. General, always good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Gerard. Always a pleasure to visit with you. Appreciate it. So yeah. full disclosure, we need to tell everybody how long you and I know each other, 40 years or so, <laughs> I think. Huh? 40 plus. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, man, what a career you have had. You have made us proud. Uh, you have certainly made the state of Mississippi proud. You have uh, led our National Guard with honor and distinction. And I'll tell you, General, I hear nothing but positive feedback about your leadership and we're grateful for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gerard. It's been a great it's been a great trip. Um, Military has always been a part of my life uh, as a part time job, and to be able to really step into this job and influence some things on the full time side, on the everyday side, has been a just a real honor, real yeah. treat. So now you are retiring from this role. I am. I am. So in the in the military, you have a deadline. And uh, so men retire every day that hit their their deadline on the federal side, and uh, so that's sort of where I've where I am. Okay. Yeah. And when when does that officially take place? So today. Oh, okay. Today, today. is my last day on federal orders in uniform. Wow. So you caught me on my last day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is uh, unbelievable. So anything in particular? I, I'm sure that. There's so many uh, visions of your various experiences you've, you've got to be sort of reflecting on as you approach this day. Anything in particular yeah. that you want to talk about? I no, know there's a lot. And, and I thought about that in preparing. And, okay. and, you know, you go through this cycle of you're doing a part-time soldier in the 80s and 90s and don't have any expectation of deploying anywhere, and then all of a sudden the towers come down. We actually did Desert Storm, but that didn't really involve – very many guards when our 155 uh, was put on notice, held in reserve, never went to Iraq. Um, but when the towers came down, everybody had to deploy, and I did an Afghanistan tour, did a Kosovo tour during that okay. during that time period. And those are things to reflect on. Um, but, but, George, I'm going to tell you, um, this is the 19th anniversary of Katrina, 19-year anniversary of Katrina. Yeah, exactly. And um, that's probably my most memorable memory of being in the guard when we actually had to you know invent as we went along to respond to Katrina and um, continue to be proud of how we responded during that time frame in the best spirit and tradition of the guard serving your local communities and your state yeah yeah you know during the COVID crisis and I may have told you this on another show I my my role during the COVID we were delivering vaccines delivering testing and I would walk around to each site and a young lady who was actually in college uh, but was taking time off because of the COVID epidemic couldn't go to class yeah told me she said sir she had deployed twice she said sir um you know, I will always deploy with the National Guard when I'm called to do so, but this this is why I joined the Guard. And I think every Guardsman could tell you that, that, that we want to serve our communities any way we can. We want to respond immediately, uh, especially like the first responders. And uh, and we'll deploy. We'll do those things that the federal government asks us to do, but we're, we join the Guard to service our communities. Wow. So I believe you were uh, part of the ROTC program, Commission 1982, Mississippi State. Is that correct? I was, and uh, my, my, my story with that um, is there were about 12 of us that the, the process that day um, is you wore your uniform underneath your gown, and uh, we all got our piece of paper. We walked to the back, took our gowns off, and we were sort of the last event for that ceremony to be commissioned in front of the entire Coliseum and all the other graduates. And um, it was 1982, so you're sort of at that precipice between uh, Jimmy Carter and Reagan, between the 70s and the 80s, where our patriotism started renewing again. And I'll yeah. tell you, I experienced it that day. The, um, as we started out on our march toward the, toward the front of the, the auditorium, there were, there were kite calls and whistles, the kind, type of things you would expect in the 70s for our Vietnam veterans and all that kind of thing. But as we got about halfway, we started hearing intermittent clapping and by hmm. the time we were at the front of that procession, we were getting a standing ovation. Wow. By people who were not there just to see us, but to see their sons and daughters graduating. It was a moving experience. It's, it's something I'll never forget. But I think it 
I think I experienced the transition of the U.S. away from the 70s and back into this 80s and this patriot, patriotic yeah. fervor that we have been living through for the last last 30, 40 years. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that is exactly right. You and I have been around long enough to remember uh, the Vietnam era when we were youngsters, and, and, it, and it was a difficult time. The nation was fractured, and, and uh, uh, these young soldiers, uh, Marines, uh, sailors, airmen, were just called by their country to do a job. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't get involved in all the, the politics of, of the Vietnam War, and it didn't really matter. They right. were just doing their job. Right. And, 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 and I'll tell you, just a shout-out for Vietnam veterans, okay? Um, a lot of those veterans came back and joined the Guard after oh, their really? service in Vietnam. Um, and I will tell you, I, I had mentors who made me successful who were Vietnam veterans, uh, men walking around Jackson, Mississippi, walking around Hattiesburg, hmm. who, um, you know, really mentored us. And I will tell you, the, the current leadership in the military – we're all mentored by Vietnam veterans. And so we're sort of the last um, hmm. generation that was mentored by that bunch. But just know that maybe maybe they didn't get treated like they could have been treated, better treated, that kind of thing, but they had an impact on the military through the 80s and 90s and 2000s with their mentorship. Hmm. That's so just know that. So I, just thought, know that. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Didn't know that. And it... It always saddened me the way they were treated because I just felt like, gosh, if, if you want to express any anger, go to our, our civilian leaders who got us right. in this war. These folks were just doing what their country asked them right. to do. We had the draft in place back then, and, yeah. and uh, many would be called right out of high school. Yeah. Next thing you know, a few months later, man, they're in country. Well, uh, they had a— those Vietnam veterans had an impact on my career, is what I'll tell you. That's fantastic. I'm yeah. so glad to hear that, and, yeah. and I'm appreciative to them as well. Yeah. Uh, it, it takes a special person to, I guess, see through all that, because you're right. We didn't treat them the best we could, certainly initially, but today we should respect and revere and honor them because yeah. they, they did a job Agreed. Uh, for us. And the fact that they've had such a positive impact on military operations and organization in general um, is is good to hear. Good to know. Yeah, so 2016, I believe, is when Governor Phil Bryant, right, um, appointed you as the adjutant general. 2016, Correct. and then Governor Tate Reeves reappointed you. Correct. To that uh, position in 2020. So did you have any idea that you would be adjutant general? Did you have any aspiration to continue through the ranks yeah. from 1982 when you were initially commissioned? So I'm sitting in Kosovo uh, deployed uh, when that decision was made. I, and because I was deployed to Kosovo, I, I did not know they were having that conversation. And, and I'll say I probably had some advocates for me who yeah. said you might want to consider uh, Dur Boyles for the role. Yeah. And I think Phil Bryant, Governor Bryant, considered me in that mix and – and, and selected me. So when I got the phone call, it was a surprise. Uh, and I had to, I'm in Kosovo, so I have to call Robin, you know, Robin, yeah, my wife. Sure. I said, you know, well, look, I appreciate the opportunity, but I have to call my wife. And um, we, we did, and we had a good conversation about it. And she says, well, look, if the governor's asking you to do it, and I agreed, then, then we need to do it. That's awesome. And, uh, so that's sort of how I stepped into this role. Yeah. Well, we're fortunate uh, to have you in that role and, and uh, really pleased that Governor Bryant um, had the good, um, good sense to, to appoint you. Well, and I think uh, my predecessor was an active, sort of an active duty. He had grown up in the Guard all his life and, and had that perspective that he brought and did a very fine job prior to me. When I came in, I was an M-Day guy. I was a part-time guy who brought a business acuum to the yeah. to the role, and so I sort of brought a different perspective to it, a different focus, and I think we were were very successful. And now my Bobby Ginn, who's replacing me, a mm -hmm. great soldier and a great selection, um, is a full-time guardsman and uh, has been running things down at Camp Shelby forever, and he's going to bring in a new focal focus point, a new perspective. Yeah. and. He's going to really uh, make us even more formidable as the National Guard. Now, you're a Jackson native um, yep. in the insurance business uh, yep. professionally. In fact, uh, don't mind saying you, you helped my company and uh, my family with yep. insurance for, yep. for many years. But uh, like you said, you come from a, a business background, successful business. Uh, when we come back, I want to find out just how much that influenced uh, you 
uh, serving as adjutant general. Great. Okay. We got uh, adjutant general Durr Boyles in the Element Well studio. We're coming right back. Everyone, we're in the Element Well studio. We're enjoying our visit with the adjutant general of Mississippi, Major General Jansen Boyles. So before we went to break there, uh, General, I'll ask you this question first. You talked about how you uh, come from a, a business, a professional background, tapped for this role by Governor Phil Bryant, 2016. So were most of the uh, – what's funny? Well, I'm laughing. Uh, <laughs> I, when I came into the job, um, and I'm sitting there for the, probably the first week, I'm asking everybody, okay, so let me see your balance sheet and your revenue <laughs> statement. You're and, being an uh, insurance broker. <laughs> yeah, that's probably that's probably the first time an adjutant general had asked them that question. Let me see your P&L and your balance I sheet. I love it. <laughs> and uh, Doing some risk assessment perhaps as well. <laughs> right. I love it. That's awesome. So, Well, uh, the question I have is, uh, do most of the adjutant generals – uh, across the states, do they come from an active duty background or a, or a professional uh, it, background? It, it varies. Uh, I would tell you, uh, Mississippi probably leans more towards the traditional guardsmen, like Bill Freeman. Yeah, uh, came from the banking industry. Um, uh, Harold Cross came from the uh, insurance industry. Yeah, um, his predecessor was full time. So it just it varies. But I'll tell you, most states, and I didn't most states across the National Guard. They simply promote their active duty guys who have been in that organization okay. uh, for a long time. I can think of s probably the top five or six states have all done that. Huh. And we're sort of a little different in that respect. And that's good. That's healthy. Well, how did your experience in business, you were talking about, let me see your balance sheet, P&L. Yeah, yeah. how, how did that experience kind of shape your approach to uh, this job as the adjutant general? Well, the uh, so so – just, just perspective. So, for example, the Mississippi National Guard brings $700 million a year into this state. Wow. About half of that, a little more than half of that is payroll. Okay. So think sure. about that. And that's the, way I, that's the way I looked at it. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, and, and the state of Mississippi writes us a $10 million check every year. So I looked at it as numbers. So for a $10 million check... We get a seven hundred million dollar return every year on investment. Okay, not a bad, not a bad deal. And uh, when you get into it, you look at each of the enterprises. You know, Camp Shelby, it's a training base for the military. I look at it as a business enterprise. So, sure. what can we do to grow Camp Shelby? Yeah. To 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 sell more food in restaurants and and sell more hotel rooms around Camp Shelby, kind of thing. So that's the way I was approaching everything. The military. The National Guard does the military very well. We are exceptional at military, both uh, here in Mississippi and then when we when we deploy. Um, and I was just sort of looking at it as a as an enterprise, so just a different perspective, if that makes sense. What about in terms of managing people? So there are twelve thousand National Guardsmen in the Mississippi National Guard. About thirty nine hundred of those are full time. Okay. And uh, so we have a very robust Human Resources Department, a very robust state uh, employee department kind of thing. And so I had a great staff that really, really managed the personnel. Uh, but I will share with your listeners that um, the Mississippi National Guard is made up of three types or four types. Your traditional soldier, okay, that's easy. Uh, we have full-time uniformed uh, men and women who uh, – are like Title X soldiers, active duty soldiers. Then we have technicians who work for the federal government, but they simply drill on the weekends like the traditional guardsmen do. And then we have state employees. And so those three groups run the Mississippi National Guard on an everyday basis, and they're needed. Hmm. Uh, and then and then uh, your M-Day soldiers plug in where they're needed also. Okay. Yeah. So are you looking at the monitor in front of you there? I am now. Yeah. Okay. So you see uh, – Yeah. You see, that's uh, that's you and me with about 40 years separating. I, think. I had better looking legs than you did, Gerard. <laughs> and so the folks who know that aren't watching, uh, 
the general and I played a little softball together many years ago, and uh, there's a photo of us in our softball team, and we're standing right next to each other. Back yeah. then, we wore those crazy short shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and then next to it on the split screen is, is you and I back in June. What a blast that was yeah. where uh, the legislature took on uh, the guard softball team uh, at Embrave Stadium, and you and I took a minute to take a photo. That was such a blast. Hadn't been on the softball field with you in a few years. It's been a few years. It has been. And uh, just for the record, so your listeners know, you were the starting pitcher and I was the catcher on the softball team. <laughs> That's so. right. We had a blast. and had a bunch of good guys we played with as well. Little did we know you were going to be our adjutant general. That's pretty yeah. cool. I, I, that? I brag about that all the time. I want you to know that. Well, so, this I'm... is the adjutant general me playing softball. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. That is that is really cool. So, uh, will you stay involved in any way? Consult. Uh... So, uh, I, I think uh, the role of the adjutant general, the retired adjutant general, sort of to always be that. You know, we're invested. We're invested in our leadership. So, as these youngsters, these lieutenants, these captains, these majors promote and get more responsibility, become leaders in the organization. We're there for them. Just if, if they want to make a phone call, we're there to answer the phone for them. Um, but you'll see the adjutant generals at all the ceremonies. Okay. I mean, we, we all – I mean, it's it's family, Gerard. Yeah, and, should uh, be. It's always good to come back and just be around family. Um, I'll take on a new role. I'll go back to the insurance world. Okay. And, but coming back to the National Guard and seeing what they've accomplished over the next few years is going to be such – such a rewarding experience. General Bobby Ginn will succeed yep. you. Yeah. Seems like that's a, an excellent choice. Excellent On choice. the part of the governor. I, I caught you excellent. guys at our, our Rotary meeting a few weeks ago. Really enjoyed your remarks yep. and General Ginn's remarks as well. It seems like that he's pretty excited, as he, as he should be, and I think he will continue the best traditions and certainly the foundation you and your predecessors built. Yeah, so when I came into this job, uh, I had known Bobby again for a long time. This was six years, six years ago, and um, had to make a change at Camp Shelby. The current commander was retiring, and uh, I, I had nobody else on my mind except for Bobby again. He had been down there working with our uh, tank maintenance facility for about 15 years, and had been running it for probably six or eight years. And he was the guy. And uh, not only did he bring that kind of experience as a leader to, the, to Camp Shelby, and he's also bringing it, of course, to this organization, but he had a wealth of knowledge and contacts around the country. Hmm. And uh, we're, we're doing some things down at Camp Shelby right now that we're doing only because of his relationship with our active duty federal partners. And uh, he's going to be a great leader for this organization, and he will bring more opportunities to Mississippi and to Camp Shelby. You know, you talked about uh, the sort of the family atmosphere. And, and how important is it, General, to, to uh, engender that but also maintain the necessary discipline that's so important and critical to the success of our military? It's kind of a fine line, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what separates the Guard from active duty because in active duty you're rotating – in and out of units and organizations all the time. And yeah. so maybe you get three years at a certain location, you learn that job, and then you move on to another one in the Mississippi National Guard. And I guess that's why I call it family. We've got people working in jobs for 30 years. I got you. Time. Now, they may, they may be in that job for 30 years as a technician working on tanks or maintenance or whatever. They are moving around the Guard in their part-time job, their M-Day role that makes sense I, to yeah, you. Yeah, sure. So, um, but it's the experience that we have in the National Guard of our maintainers, our logisticians, our combat uh, knowledge, our operations folks that makes the National Guard different than active duty. Okay. It's that long-term deal. And so, and so then because you have that long-term responsibility, you just automatically become friendly. Yeah. Family. Become yeah, family. sure. So, so uh, the the guard uh, the guards across the country are are fantastic and of course are are uh, filled with uh, volunteers who who yeah. do this yeah. to serve their communities their countries and so forth. The guard in Mississippi is highly respected across the country, is it not? It is. So, um, and and I'll, I'll tell you, you know we're probably top ten in every category. 
wow. across the 54, and I say 54 because we, we count the territories, the yeah. four territories. Uh, we're, we're respected from the standpoint of the equipment that we have. Um, Camp Shelby is respected as the largest training base yeah. facility in the country as a National Guard facility. Uh, that respect not only is in the National Guard, but it's on active duty. Uh, it's in the reserves. We, uh, we have a reserve facility that's being constructed at Camp Shelby now because of our relationship with the reserves. Um, just, just, it's just, we're so well respected. And, and, and just know that we don't know what we've got here because we live in Mississippi. Yeah. Um, but compared to other states, we have a number of toys that other states don't have. We just have an incredible workforce. So. Major General Jansen Boyles, the Adjutant General of Mississippi, has been our guest. Major General, congratulations on your career, sir. This is your official retirement date. We are so <laughs> grateful for your service and your leadership right. and really honored to have you here with us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you so much. It's been an honor to serve. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Folks, we're stepping aside.